uh, in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. This is a Saint Akbari, and I'm talking and uh, about rapid review or a kind of rapid overview. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. This is a Saint Akbari, and I'm talking about rapid overview of lab test interpretation for medical students, also medical intern. So. I believe that there are a lot of details in medicine, so it's better to know just ballpark figure medicine. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of reasons to be disappointed, but you know the essential. So in medicine, we divide the information on three categories. Must now that you should definitely know, should now, it's better to know and may know. Okay, if you have time, if you're a bookwormer, then go for that. But in my view, at least know the essentials. So I'm just gonna cover the essentials today. So for lab test interpretation, let's make it simple. Medicine, I think it's confusing by itself. So I ask all professors, educators, whatever, make it simple for us. Or we are poor students with too much information to mastery. So uh, today, I'm gonna discuss for just 10 years and beyond or six years because you know the child and infants have uh, they have a complete and complex different physiology so I'm gonna cover six years or ten years about so about geriatrics adult surgery women you can use all of this but not pediatrics less than six years. Okay, I'm gonna cover blood tests and also biochemistries, urine tests, the stool examination, calcium, vitamin D, and ESR and CRP. At the end of the discussion, if we have time, I'm just gonna cover a little bit about ABG as well. So cell blood count or CBC, you know, you need to know some facts about it. So white BC count and differentiation, also hemoglobin and also platelet. So look at here. <clears throat> so this is a report of biochemistries. You can see that there's a total blood count, hemoglobin, MCV. Here's the differentiation, for example, how many percent are uh, neutrophils or basophils or whatever. So this is what we know as the CBC test. Also the platelet, if we have it here, I can see, yes, platelet is here. So uh, today I'm gonna cover it for you. Again here, WBC, HB, and here the differential. Here is the, the platelet. Uh, platelet count okay uh, here again HB MCV platelet count and total leukocyte count here is a differential okay about HB uh, white BC interpretation first of all we should know that CBC count normal CBC count is about 4500 up to 11,000. Any number more than 11,000 is a problem. So, sorry, you please, uh, you should be muted. Please mute yourself if any attendants are not muted. So, please mute yourself for now. So, leukocytosis is any amount beyond 11,000 is leukocytosis. So, you know, it could be infection. It could be cancer, but two other things should be uh, considered all the time. Any kind of stress, for example, any trauma or myocardial infarction or whatever. And mainly using corton or corticosteroids because they cause a process called demargination. So you may have a false, it's true, but it's not a real leukocytosis. It's just demargination of previously attached white BC to the small vessels. So they just come into the blood and you see them. So all of the time, just rule out any kind of stress, then using corticosteroid and then look for infection. 
especially if you have a neutrophilia or segment more than 60%, okay? So CBC normal variation, I told you, you should know that. It's 4,500 up to 11,000, but, but, as I told you, it's just for adults. So it's up to 20K, 20,000 in infants, say even in the first 12 hours of life, it could be as high as 30K. But something that you should clearly know is the neutrophil lymphocyte ratio. So it's, it's uh, neutrophils or segments are all the time more than uh, lymphocytes in adults. So if, if you see that lymphocyte is more than neutrophil, there is a problem. It's called lymphocytosis. By the way, for below the four years old, uh, lymphocytes are more than neutrophil. Four to six, they are somehow equal. But as I told you, in six years and above, all the time, neutrophil is much more than uh, lymphocytes, okay? <clears throat> so this is the YBC differentiation, and this is the maximum rate of each of these. You have to know this all the time when you're seeing the differentiation of a YBC. So neutrophil or segment should be at maximum 60. So it's if it's 65, it's a problem. Lymphocyte at maximum should be 40. So if it's 45, 50, it's lymphocytosis, it's a problem. It could be a viral infection, lymphoma, whatever, whatever. Monocyte, more than 9%, eosinophil, more than 5%, and basophil, more than 2%. This is really important because, for example, if you see that eosinophil is 7% or 9%, it could be allergic reaction, it could be some kind of worm infection, or whatever, whatever, whatever. Look at here, it's more than 11,000, and it's leukocytosis. Look at here, neutrophil poly, yeah, it's more than 60, so we have a problem here. And also, there are, there are some inflammatory markers that I'm going to discuss in later, so like CRP, and also you see, a CRP more than 10 shows a kind of inflammation. Forget about the normal range here. You should know that CRP more than 10 shows something significant and more than 100 really significant okay so it it's it's somehow revealing a kind of infection here look at here what we see is between 4500 to 11000 so it's normal and also look at the count oh my god in differentiation we have a problem here because it's more than 60% so you need to repeat the test first. And if it's again neutrophilia, we may have a problem. Look at here again. Platelet count, new total leukocyte count, it's 14,000, so it's high. We have a problem here. And also to the count, it's more than 60%. So again, we have a problem here. It could be corton, it could be infection, it could be cancer, it could be a uh, recent tumor, whatever. I'll, I'll talk to you later about the platelet count, but as a hint here, mild thrombocytosis up to 500,000, 515, even to the 600,000 could be because of the infection. But more than that, it's not. It, it should be referred to an oncologist. It could be a cancer malignancy. Okay, look at here. White we see six, about six thousand is normal. Okay, is there any differentiation? No. Look at here. It's eighteen thousand. It's high. Oh my God, we have a problem here. Look at here. It's four point eight thousand. It's okay. And look at the rates. Okay, no problem. Oh my god, it was going to feel more than 5%. So we have a problem. We will repeat the test, and if it's again more than 5%, we have a problem here. You see, even with a normal count, you always need to check the diff. So always request a CBC diff. It's more rational, okay? White BC, 15,000. Too much, you see? CRP is 65. So it's again we have an infection or another kind of problem here. 
Is there any div here? I can't see. Also, yes, R here. It's high. And it's it's crazy because these two are um, are revealing inflammation. So checking together is somehow something that only dummies do. So just check one of them and most of the time CRP is enough. Okay, I'm going to cover the HP interpretation. So you need to know some numbers all the time. For men, any number less than 14. For women, any number less than 12. And for pregnant women, any number less than 10 shows anemia, okay? So in a pregnant woman, because of the dilution or whatever, or whatever, the rates come down. In any patient with this hemoglobins first of all you should request a retic count as well as a peripheral blood smear all the time okay you have to check it so if the retic count is more than 2.5 it shows that you have a loss it could be internal loss or external loss it could be hemolysis or blood loss or whatever so if it's not if it's the retic count is less than 2.5 then you check the mcv if the mcv is less uh, if, if the mcv is between 80 and 100 it's normal side it could be a chronic inflammation it could be hyperthyroidism it could be corticosteroid use whatever but if it's less than for 80 it's microcytic and if it's more than 100 it's macrocytic okay so First of all, and the most important thing that I want you to know is microcytic anemia because it's very common. And the main differential diagnosis here is iron deficiency. So if you have a, if you are requesting a CBC, please, please all the time request ferritin as well as FE level and also TIBC. I say why? Because there are some in indices like Minzer or whatever, whatever, whatever. I'll give you some clue how to differentiate between thalassemia and, uh, I don't know, uh, iron deficiency anemia. But ferritin and also FE on TIBC ratio will help you definite diagnosis. So you can have a chance to diagnose your patient very well, okay? So if MCV is less than 80 is microcytic, it could be an iron deficiency anemia or thalassemia or many other differential diagnoses here. But I can say all the time request the ferritin level because iron deficiency can, can be a sign of and can be kind of comorbidity. So it could present with even normocytic or macrocytic. So it could be a simultaneously Folic acid deficiency and iron deficiency. And if you give it folic acid, it would be anemia again. Okay? So all the time request ferritin. Okay, by the way, if you are in a limited place without any kind of checking the ferritin or FE level of or TIBC, look to the RDW. If RDW is more than 14, it means it 15, it means that some of the red blood cells are small, some are big. It shows our deficiency anemia, okay? Or misery index. So it's MCV on RBC ratio is more than 13. It's in favor of iron deficiency anemia. But the best thing that I can say is that if you request ferritin and ferritin is less than 30, it's iron deficiency anemia definitely, okay? But Ferritin is an acute phase reactant, okay? So in, in case of inflammation, whatever, 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 it could be false positive and more than 30. So in these cases, you need to interpret FE on TIBC ratio. And if it's more than, it's, it's less than 20%, it's RN deficiency again. So for treating this patient, you can give them fruit sulfate pills three times a day up to six months and then check check the lab test on a three months interval okay the patient may need to use iron for i don't know six months nine months 12 months just do the follow-up of the patient it's very very important look at here we have some data here i don't care about it 
HB is 10.6, for example, imagine it's for a male, and MCV is more than 100, okay? So it's macrocytic. For macrocytic, two important differentials are folate acid deficiency, and also uh, folic acid deficiency, and also B12 deficiency, okay? But there are many more differential diagnoses, but just please do know these ones at least, okay? <laughs> uh, here, look at here, it's, uh, where is the HB? HB is here, 8.6, it's low, regardless, it is a pregnant woman or man, it's, it's low, Look at the MCV, it's microcytic. Okay, if you have here a PBS, look at the here. PBS shows us something, and is a cytosis, hypochromic, microcytic RBC, whatever, whatever, whatever. But if you request a ferritin, it would be okay. But if not, if not, look at the, <clears throat> look at the RDW. So I'm looking to the RDW, it's more than 15, it's in favor of RN deficiency anemia. Or MCV 65 on RBC count, it's roughly less than 5. So it's more than 13, it's again in favor of RN deficiency anemia. Look at here, eosinophil is more than 5.2 and it's eosinophilia. By the way, about HP is 14, so it's normal, okay. So it's normal, okay, good for us. White BC count, it's 11, more than 11,000, so it's high, okay. HP is 10.7, it's normal in a pregnant woman, but for non-pregnant woman and for men, it's abnormal, okay. Look at the MCV, it's more than 100. So, the main thing that we're thinking about it is folate deficiency or uh, B12 deficiency. So, we request for the test. So, if you have a hematologic problem, a nervous problem, B12 is most probable because you may have subacute degeneration or whatever, whatever, or we call it a skid. But if just we have some anemic problems or whatever, uh, possibly folate uh, is a problem, okay? For B12, in case you tested and uh, the lab reports a low B12, there are many, many things to know, but make it simple, man. You give them B12 ampule for one for each day for one week. So one, 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 up to the first week and then weekly. Again, look for the cause. Is it a pernicious anemia? Is it, I don't know. You have a gastropathy. Why you should have a B12 deficiency? Is it a nutritional deficiency or whatever? But if it's folic acid, you should give them 0 0.4 milligram to one milligram per day. Uh, and if your patient has a history of a spina bifida or any kind of problem like this, so you may give them up to five milligram per day. But for majority of the population, just give them fucking one tab of folic acid every day, okay? Look at here, main carpascular volume is here. First of all, we're looking to hemoglobin. Oh, it's low for non-pregnant and uh, men so look at here it's one more than 100 so in this case we check for b12 or folate acid and then give give b12 or uh, folate acid based on this so you're checking the patients uh, every three months for example again here hp 10.6 mcv 78 it's microcytic did we check the ferritin? Unfortunately not. So I'm looking just to the RDW. RDW is V, uh, CV is 12.7. We have two RDW here. So the percentage is 12. It's in favor of thalassemia, but let's, let's do the MCV on RBC, means their index. It's, um, it's more than 
13 so uh, it shows our end efficiency enemy so for the confirmation we can do very thin level as well as fe ratio fe and tibc and then calculate the ratio and then give the final diagnosis you see it's better to do the ferritin test with the cbc to not not to be confused like this again here hp is oh my god hp is 21 so this is something awkward right <laughs> hp is 21 with mcv of 46 so we have something called polycythemia i told you in women less than 12 is anemia but less than 16.5 is poly uh, more than 16.5 is uh, polycythemia means that we have too much uh, sites <laughs> rbc's and in men more than 18.5 okay or uh, to make it simple hematocrit normal is about uh, 15 so 15 minus plus 2 becomes more than 52 for men or less than more than 6 uh, 48 in women okay so you have a problem you have a case like this hb is this one you should check for epo level erythropoietin level if it's high it's okay it shows that i don't know patient smoking high altitude whatever 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 okay uh, but if the EPO level is low, just refer it to oncologist. It could be a cancer, okay? It could be polycythemia vera or something. So you can do, if it's high or normal, it's possibly environmental causes like smoking, high altitude, whatever. You can do ECG, you can do cardiac stress test, echocardiography, and spirometry. But I want you to know, if you did the EPO level and it's low, it's it's serious, okay? And you should check for JAK2 mutation. And also, I mean, the uh, oncologist will do that. You just refer it, please. Look at here. HP, oh my God, is 20. So it's more than four rates, okay? 18.5 in men and 16.5 in women. Platelet count. Normal platelet count uh, is 150 to 450,000. So less than 150, it's thrombocytopenia, okay? Uh, first of all, if you have a patient with, uh, with coming to your, to your uh, office with the thrombocytopenia, because penia means deficiency and thrombocyte means platelet, okay? thrombocytes sites in charge of the thrombosis so they are platelet okay first of all please repeat the test with edta ask this because some labs use some i don't know cheap materials that they just cause aggregation of platelets and falsely report the uh, low platelet count so uh, edta will inhibit it and give you the correct number okay then check for the history of drugs some drugs can cause thrombocytopenia and surgery post-surgical thrombocytopenia third look for petechia purpura ecchymosis and then gently please check for liver and spleen for splenomegaly uh, or liver whatever but there is another point here i want you to know it's an essential if you have a bicytopenia i mean that you have a low white bc count or low hb plus low platelet count it's not something normal it's by cytopenia means we have a uh, deficiency in two cells or pancytopenia all of them it should be referred okay the final point if you have a low platelet with neutrophilia it's okay up to 100 not less than that it could be a sign of uh if you have it with neutrophilia it could be a sign of infection okay look at here hp uh, white bc is normal <clears throat> hemoglobin is 
So if it's a man, it's low. If it's low, man, it's okay. Um, platelet number is okay. Oh, platelet number is about 100,000. So it's too low, okay? Uh, you should check for uh, repeating the test with EDTA and check it finally what's going on there. Thrombocytosis, I told you before, mild thrombocytosis could be a sign of infection or even iron deficiency anemia, okay? Mild, up to 500, but don't do the risk. If it's 500,000 plus one, <laughs> refer it, okay? After checking it again, if it's again high, just refer it because it could be cancer. Platelet count, it should be definitely be referred with this platelet count, okay? White piece is normal. Uh, polycytes, you see? Polys are 65, it's neutrophil. 65, we have a problem here. We have a problem here. And I told, I will, I will tell that ESR is age dependent, so having a reference range for ESR is crazy. Oh, fortunately, we have a ferritin level here. It's less than 30. So we have our deficiency here, okay? Um, RBC, HB is 12.5, so it depends on the gender. If it's female, it's okay. If it's male, we have the anemia here. An MCV, it's normal cytic. Platelet count is normal. PDW is something like RDW, but it's not something important to know. Okay, ferritin review for the last time. It's an iron binding protein, also it's like your face protein. So if ferritin is less than 13, it's definitely iron deficiency anemia. If infection, there is an infection, it could be misleading. So please, 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 for the sake of God, check the serum iron and TIBC simultaneously and you will uh, have a diagnosis here. <clears throat> FE on TIBC is less than 13 or less than 20 here, the ratio. But here, ferritin is high. You see, it's possibly because of a problem. So if you just check the ferritin here, ferritin is normal. If, if it's, it's, it's even more than sometimes normal because more than 100 it's somehow accumulation of the ferritin in the body it's somehow uh, can cause us some it could be um, hemochromocyte hemochromocytosis or something like this but but if you calculate this it's less than 20 percent and this is our deficiency anemia again ferritin 2.5 definitely and if you check the ratio it would be less than 20 percent <coughs> sorry here we have ferritin less than 13 so less than 30 are in the chance anemia definitely okay let's move to the next test after cbc you need to know thyroid function test for the sake of god i need you to know this only two points the normal TSH level is about 0 0.5 to 4.5. And any change you make for a patient, for example, increasing the dose, decreasing the dose, whatever, whatever you do, check it please six to eight weeks later, okay? So, we have something called clinical hyperthyroidism, clinical hypothyroidism, subclinical and subclinical hyperthyroidism subclinical hyperthyroidism okay don't make yourself confused okay if the tsh is more than 4.5 it shows hypothyroidism okay if you have a low t4 then it's hyper hypothyroidism definitely and you should give them with uh levothyroxine 100 micrograms or 50 micrograms it's out of scope of here how to prescribe it but it's very simple okay i'll tell you later if you have a tsh more than 4.5 and normal t4 it's subclinical so 
you need to give them half dose of levotiraxin if their age is more than 65 they have a cardiac problem whatever okay so if the TSH is less than 0 0.5 and you have a high T4 or T3 because we have a T3 thyrotoxicosis as well it's again definite hyperthyroidism you give them methimazole 10 milligram two times a day so <clears throat> if you have a TSH less than 0 0.5 and T4 and T3 are normal you don't need to treat it but if the age again is more than 65 or the patient has cardiac problem you should give them methimazole 5 milligram BD it's 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 again half doubt okay but for subclinical most of the time if it's not I don't know there is no cardiac problem or the age is not uh, more than 65 you can just repeat the test again in one two three months uh, so for the sake of God you should only know that TSH is somewhere between 0 0.5 to uh, 4.5 all the time just know the range okay and do the follow-up with any change six to eight months later look at here look at the TSH oh my god it's more than 4.5 okay and this is low so we have a real hyperthyroidism TSH is in the normal range it's okay lipid profile the first thing that I want you know to about lipid profile you expect it to be impaired in I don't know elderly population those with bad food I don't know uh, junk food too much um, you know not uh, bad foods in, in one word and sedentary lifestyle coach Plato people or whatever but I want you for the sake of God if somebody about 18 years or 20 years comes to your office with a high TG or low I don't know HDL or high LDL the first thing you should think of is a problem with thyroid so if you give them atorvastatin or something it won't work because th there is a problem in thyroid so for the first thing you do for this patient young patient comes to your office with hyperlipidemia is testing of the thyroid please do the TFT test okay you may need to treat it simultaneously with atorvastatin or a kind of vastatin but the first thing that you should know is that for the young population you should first rule out thyroid problem look at here TG is uh, the, the normal range for TG is less than 150 so it's 153 it's borderline but more than 200 is high okay for HDL it's 40 and for LDL I'm gonna cover it later so TG more than 200 is hyper TG 150 to 200 borderline and, and uh, less than 150 is normal high TG could be a cause of pancreatitis so you should treat it by the way high TG problem with impaired lipid profile whatever it is it could be uh, it could occur with X or metabolic syndrome so please check the hypertension of all extremities both hands both arms and also femoral okay do this please be careful about fatty liver and also diabetes um, there is a controversy about being in a fasting state or not but please ask your patient to be to be fasting until we have more powerful evidence to discuss about it by the way when we are treating a patient you should know that we have some goals okay hdl should be more than 40 tg should be less than 150 and hdl should be less than 100 okay so if your patient has a risk factor i don't know problem recent angiography or diabetes mellitus or whatever you should lower it up to less than 70 the LDL level okay 
but if you want to start treatment there are different guidelines but uh, most of them says that for LDL if it's more than 190 you have to start drug there is no 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 place for I don't know uh, regimen or uh, doing exercise or whatever they they could be done but in parallel with that but if your patient again has risk factors hypertension diabetes fatty liver whatever 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 you can even start the treatment with less than this level so coming back here tg between 150 and 200 is borderline hdl 51 it's good and ldl is 46 less than 100 so it's okay okay so it's a little bit high you say okay do some exercise it uh some i don't know um uh, less problematic food and they don't listen to you so just tell them again here it's tsh Sorry. Okay, say, so, uh, so let's move on just for conclusion. 12 hours of fasting is required. Our goal would be uh, HDL more than 40, TG less than 150, and LDL less than 100. If the patient has risk factor, less than 70 okay so in case you have a patient with ldl more than 190 or i don't know in a patient with have somebody have with a risk factor you may start with less amount so i don't know 150 you may start atorvastatin the only drug that really do something in this regard is atorvastatin okay so all the time do the atorvastatin please 50 millig uh, 40 milligram every night it's better to be used in nights okay because of the uh, fat metabolism okay this is cholesterol level ldl less than 100 hdl less than 40 i told you if your patient has a risk factor less than 70 Tri triglyceride or tg less than 150 okay let's look here tsh is normal and you should check also the normal range of T4 and T3 here. By the way, I'm gonna uh, talk about vitamin D here, vitamin D3. So the normal level uh, is almost like ferritin. So less than 30 is a problem. And between 30 and 100, it's okay. So in case you have a vitamin D3 less than 30, you need to start treatment for that. Just let me let let's make it clear. We need 1,000 unit of vitamin D3 and 1,000 unit of calcium every day. Okay. But there are many different companies with that. So check every medication or supplementation that your patient uh, consume because they have different kind of uh, I don't know different amount of vitamin d3 so they need 1000 unit of each okay for roughly 1000 unit if your patient has a vitamin d3 less than 30 i don't know 10 or 20 or whatever you should start 50,000 uh international unit of vitamin d it there are pearls like this once weekly up to eight weeks and then monthly then check it uh, in a three month interval because more than 100 could be also toxic this is same also about the calcium which the normal rate is about 8.5 to 10.5 you know calcium is something essential for cardiac contractility and um, contraction so less than this amount and more than this amount can cause QT problems whatever 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 nausea vomiting but the main problem is 
uh, cardiac problems. So if you had hypocalcemia, it's an urgency, okay? You need to give the, your patient calcium gluconate most of the time 10 cc of 10 percent solution but it's out of scope for now and if your patient has hypercalcemia you need to dilute the blood with a uh, normal saline so make it simple all the time for the sake of god because the main protein that calcium can uh, binds to is albumin you have to check the albumin level and correct the calcium rate do not treat the patient who doesn't need a treatment please so correct the calcium level and check the corrected calcium i'm gonna detail uh, talk about it okay ferritin is normal vitamin d3 is less than 30 vitamin deficiency eight weeks one pearl per week then one pearl each month check on the third month okay so any patient coming with uh using corton is too obese or have musculoskeletal complaints check it 1000 of each vitamin d and calcium give vitamin d 50,000 per weekly for eight weeks then monthly check the level in three months because it's a fat soluble vitamin and it can cause toxicity about the calcium level for the sake of god all the time check the albumin simultaneously and with this equation so uh, you need to check this and also i told you how to treat it roughly okay so here we have a vitamin d3 less than 30 it's somehow less than 30 so we started treatment here is less than 30 we started treatment okay here 4.6 oh my god we have to start we do we should do something for this patient even uh in these days we have covid19 and it, the studies are showing that some patients who are uh, who are having a better level of vitamin D have a better chance for survival in case they got COVID. Okay, uh, let's talk about renal function test. You should know that the BUN up to 12, uh, 20 is normal and creatinine 1.2 in men and 1.1 in women is normal. But all the time, check the GFR because uh it could be misleading sometimes if you are just want to rely on creatinine so if your patient has a gfr less than 90 it's a problem refer to the internist okay it's a problem so the most uh popular equation for calculating the gfr is cockroft you see that you already knew that just you should multiply it by 0 0.85 if the patient is female so you should know that it's uh, age dependent also gender dependent and also weight dependent and you calculate it but if it's less than 90 whatever it is it's a problem with the kidney let's go to the crp and esr i told you already that there are uh, inflammatory markers it's somehow a a uh, false routine here that we are checking them simultaneously but you should know that in inflammation yes R goes slowly up and then comes slowly down so in long follow-ups it's better to use ESR but and also in SLA lupus and also bone inflammation otherwise check one of them and I think in my view CRP most of the time is better some some labs just reported quantitatively some quali qualitatively so uh, always ask for quantitative to give you a number I told you why uh, because uh, less than 10 for CRP is normal 10 to 100 is moderate increase and more than 100 it's something serious it could be TB it could be malignancy life lymphoma it could be um, infection 
So it's and also angiitis, like temporal angiitis or giant cell arthritis. So we have four differentials to roll out when we have a CRP more than 100, okay? Um, the other thing I want to mention is that there is there is no reference range for ESR and you should you should calculate it by the gender and also the age. So age divided by two in men is the, is the maximum expected ESR. Age divided by two plus five is uh, expected ESR for women. So if you have a woman 40 years old, it's 40 uh, divided by 2, 20, and then plus 5, 25 is the maximum. So if it's 30, then it's abnormal. For male with same age, 20 is normal. Okay? So uh, here CRP is quantitative. It's 13, so it's moderately high. Okay? Look at here, ESR is 79, but you see there is a reference range here, but it's not true. For example, if the patient is 60 years old, then the reference rate should be at maximum 30 if it's male or 35 if it's female. So this is the ESR test. <clears throat> you see that vitamin D is okay. C-reactive protein is also 3+, plus, so it's something serious here. TSH is low, T4 is normal, but you see T3 is high. So we have also here a T3 ty thyrotoxicosis, so it's hyperthyroidism as well. So acute, they are acute phase reactants, or they are markers of inflammation like ferritin, uh, malignancy, whatever. ESR is highly insensitive comparing to CRP, so two useful places for use of the ESR, SLE, and bone-related inflammation. ESR slowly rises and slowly diminishes, but CRP going sharp, coming down sharp. Max expected C, uh, ESR is age divided by 2 in men, age divided by 2 plus 5 in women. CRP is not age-dependent, is not gender-dependent, and this is superb, so check the CRP, I think it's more rational. CRP more than uh, 10 is high, CRP more than 100 it's serious, consider bacterial infection, TB, malignancy, and also please angiitis, especially in those who have some problems in vision or have some throbbing pain in their uh, uh, zygomatic area, okay? <clears throat> so checking both of them is something crazy that's usually being done. Here CRP high, again. CRP 3 plus high and also here at the at the top you see ESR is 75 it's a 79 so it's high again uh, ESR is 75 and the age <laughs> it's in Persian so age is 30 so uh, we don't have the gender by the way if it's a male with 30 the maximum is 15. If it's, a, if, if it's a female, the maximum is 20. But 35 is high for both of them. And you see the CRP is 3 plus. So it's something serious. So 3 plus is somehow showing us that it's more than 100 quantitatively. But all the time, please request a quantitative CRP. Here it's 14. It's a moderate increase, but still important. CRP 1 plus important, TSH you see 2.4 normal, um, creatinine less than 1.1 in women, 1.2 in men, so it's normal, uh, cholesterol uh, TG normal, uh, go to the CBC, white BC is normal, HB is more than 14, normal, you see, ESR is 25, and we should know the age of the patient. For example, if this patient is 50 years old, 60 years old, this number is normal, okay? But we have CRP here, one positive, so it's not normal, by the way. So let's go to the liver function test. I'm not going into details for that because there are many details to know, but I need you to know 
three things from this okay first of all for acute fulminant hepatitis or something that is has acute process your patient is in shock or whatever 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 uh, AST and ALT or something like this could be misleading so in fulminant hepatitis or something that has a very acute phase you need to check the PT which is related to vitamin K which is related to uh, acute function of the liver so check the PT INR and for chronic problems that you want to check the chronicity check the albumin this is a very very important point that is most of the time ignored the second point is that you should differentiate between hepatocellular pattern and cholestatic pattern so if you have a rise more in AST ALT or uh, in comparison to ALP it's hepatocellular pattern but if you have a cholestatic pattern uh, a problem with the biliary tracts or something like this ALP would be uh, or direct and total biliary bean uh, will be uh, significant so ALP would be more than AST or ALT and because ALP uh, there are a lot of tissues with uh, containing ALP so for confirming that it has the liver source you should check the gamma glucosamyl transferase GGT or alpha 5 nucleotidase to confirm that it's from a, a liver source by the way, the third point is that the third point is that, for example, here you see ALT, AST, ALP. Okay, so these are all in normal range except ALP. Okay, but check it GGT is normal, so ALP is high because of another reason rather than the uh kid uh, the, rather than the liver but at the same time you see the albumin is low so we have a chronic problem possibly possibly with liver it could be i don't know, nephropathy whatever but it could be also a problem with liver we should check it as well by the way if you have isolated bilirubinemia so uh, increase in bilirubin okay the total more than 1.5 is significant and if the direct to total ratio is more than 15 percent is direct bilirubinemia so uh, if it's not then it's indirect in case it's uh, indirect first of all you should exclude hemolysis with uh, checking the retic count and if and if available haptoglobulin okay so haptoglobulin would help you and also retic count for the hemolysis i told you already if your retic count is more than 2.5 it's sign of hemolysis okay but <clears throat> if your patient has the uh, it's negative for hemolysis or whatever uh it could be Kriegler in a jar or gilbert so <clears throat> they are somehow benign if it's up to five it's called gilbert or gilbert it's okay uh it happens so if you do fasting uh something like this it may cause you some kind of jaundice but it's okay most of the time but if it's more than five it's crickler in a jar it should be treated with phenobar please so refer it to a nephrologist so if it's more than five it's not direct refer to nephrologist and there is no hemolysis okay but directs they are mainly uh in adults it could be dobbin johnson or rotor syndrome uh but in infants it could be a sign of sepsis or something like this and it's really serious i'm not going uh, into details for this but as i told you if the ALP is more than 250 and a more significant, more significant than ASTLT, then you have a problem with the bile ducts or something like this. So check the uh, gamma glu glutamyl transferase. If it's high again, it's a liver problem. 
So do the sonography and then check related factors. Again, uh, for example, here we have um, alkaline phosphorus 59, which is normal based on the range, but gamma gluon transfer is high. But you see, the ALT and AST are increasing more than ALP, so it's a cellular pattern. You're going to address it. We have a problem here, okay? Again here, AST is 52, but ALP is 183. You see, it's too much increase. So you should check the gamma gluon uh, glu GGT here. Uh, it's normal. The bilirubin total is less than 1.5. Okay, let's talk about sugar. The normal sugar, FBS is less than 100. HbA1c is less than 5.6. And two hour postprandial should be less than 140. For a DM diagnosis, if you want to diagnose a patient as diabetes mellitus, the HbA1c should be uh, these lab tests should be tested two times okay for the sake of god do not stick to stigmatize the patient with just only one test unless it has symptoms so a normal incidental finding of hba1c more than 6.5 fbs more than 125 or two hours postprandial sugar more than 200 you need to confirm it again okay but if your patient has a random blood sugar more than 200 plus symptoms of eating too much you uh, too much water uh drinking too much water eating too much food or i don't know uh too much urine whatever it's uh it could be uh categorized as diabetes mellitus so i expect you know uh we need eight hours of fasting before it plus the normal ranges that FBS is less than this in normal population, and for the F uh, for DM diagnosis is this. There is a category between them. For example, FBS about 110, so it's between these two. It's a uh, intermediate phase, okay? Or uh, I don't know, HbA1c about five. 0.9 for example or two hour post prandial 170 so in these cases it's intermediate we should follow up them you may also treat them with metformin in certain circumstances but it's out of scope of our talk today uh, please for the sake of god know two things in management of diabetes if your patient is uh, the HbA1c is more than eight. We need one, at least one drug for the control. If you are, if you are using the maximum dosage of one drug, for example, for metformin, it's three pills a day. So if you're using three pills a day, four pills a day, and it's not working, you need to add another drug. So if it's uh, more than nine, you need to use at least two drugs. And if it's more than ten you need to start insulin therapy and the goal treatments are really important hba1c seven and if your patient uh we don't need a tight control in elderly population so eight eight point five is okay fps should be less than 130 uh two hours postprandial should be less than 180 so i had a patient a few days ago with the fps around 180 and two hours postprandial is 230 so if it was if it's it was not controlled so we need to change uh, the insulin in this case or the drug add some drug or something like this so hypoglycemia i want to make it short uh first of all 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 ask for the cause if they have used insulin wrongly or they have used the uh, pills wrongly or suicide attempt or something like this you need to admit the patient 
so in case of insulin use you should admit it because of the half time of the drugs at least for one day and if if they have used some other like glibenclamide or something like this at least three days the patient should be admitted because it's a life treating condition okay so uh, i assume that i don't know your patient didn't use any food or something like this and now became hypoglycemic what should you do so you should start treatment for normal population if the bs is less than 55 or 50 and in diabetic patient you shouldn't let them come less than 70 okay so if it's the patient symptomatic will still uh, alert just dissolve tell I don't know 10 pills of sugar and water or 50 50 cc of 50 percent dextrose and then you should use maintenance as well but the life-saving one uh, to prevent seizure and other sequela is the 50 cc of 50 percent if your patient's not conscious or the blood sugar is too low so you shot you, sh you use it as a shot okay you may repeat it again okay let's move to urine analysis very very fast so i want to talk about about two things you should know two things about it uh the first thing is that everything should be normal <laughs> and uh if you have epithelial cell more than 10 or uh or many epithelial cell some references mentioned that you need to test and if you requested a culture and it's more than one bacteria it's contaminated and the second main point is that your if your patient is febrile or did exercise prior to the um, testing it's not valid it could be misleading so try to control the fever and then get the ua in case it's required uh, any abnormality again repeat the test because you need to confirm your diagnosis okay so let's start with it some reference test says that the normal volume is 60, uh, 600 cc to 3 liter but make it rough 1 liter to 3 liter is normal okay and uh, less than 1 liter you should think about the cause okay and more than 3 liter is polyuria it's again a problem about strong gravity 1.020 anything beyond this is a sign of dehydration okay so 1.30 is a sign of dehydration about protein even one plus protein is abnormal and then you need to request a 24-hour uh, collection of urine for checking the protein and you should check the volume of the urine once it's collected so you need to <clears throat> use a formula and check the creatinine in the um, serum simultaneously to the uh, creatinine in the urine and there is a formula here I'm not going uh, to the details but you know if your patient have a uh, protein urea then at least you need to do the 24 hour of volume collection and also creatine and protein and then you need to check if it's collected properly or not with the formula glucose even one plus is abnormal only exception is uh, bacteria uh, is glucose urea in uh, pregnancy so you need to do the test for the uh, gestational diabetes but again it's abnormal okay ketone one plus two plus is okay it could be because of fasting or something like this but if it's three plus it could be a sign of dka or something like this so one plus two plus is okay blood and rbc in the urine so if you have blood in the, your urine one plus two plus three plus <clears throat> it means that uh, you have something it could be rbc it could be the lyse rbc as a kind of heme protein or myoglobin so because it has heme again so heme oxidase uh, make it positive so you should you have to distinguish between these so when you have a blood look at the rbc if rbc 
I always got confused between the RBC and YBC in urine and I'll tell myself red blood cell RED so it's three and white blood cell W H I T E it's five so three and more is abnormal for RBC and for white BC five and more is abnormal okay so uh, if you have blood in your urine and RBC uh, for example four or five or something it's a problem with RBC okay it's real hematuria so you should exclude a few things recent surgery menses if your patient is in menstrual period and also a stone or uh, if you have YTPC more than five or and urinary symptom like burning in urination or something like this it could be an infection otherwise it needs a referral okay so it's very important to exclude recent surgery the patient in menses or having a serious stone and no uh, urinary symptom or uh, normal white PC, it's a problem. So real hematuria is something important. If the age is more than 40 or 45 and the patient smoking, you should consult with urologist for malignancy, for example, blood or malignancy. But if it's not a smoking and age is less than 40, refer to a nephrologist possibly you have a problem with lupus or something like this hepatitis whatever 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 uh glomerulonephritis or something like this but if rbc is less than three it could be hemolysis so check the red count or if it could be rhabdomyolysis check the history for rhabdomyolysis check the cpk level okay cast and crystals any cast is pathology so cast is accumulation of the cells or whatever 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 it's a problem i'm not gonna detail talk about the different cast but cast is a problem take it serious also about the crystals there are many crystals uh, some of them are pathologic some of them are normal but two of them are really important to now First, uric acid, and second, cysteine as an amino acid. So, if you have these ones, these are abnormal, they are thread, and you should refer them to the specialist, okay? Let's move to the bacteria, white PC, leukocyte esterase, and nitrate. So, nitrate and leukocyte esterase are showing uh, infection, uh, bacterial infection. So, and also white BC more than five. So, if they are coming together with urinary symptoms, it's most of the time a problem with the infection. But uh, you should exclude pyelonephritis all the time. So, <clears throat> if you have white BC and above, it's pyuria. If no bacteria, no nitrate, no symptom, no systemic problem, it's a street bacteria, pyuria. It could be uh, interstitial nephritis, whatever, 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 refer it, okay? But if the nitrate is positive, uh, leukocyte esterase is positive, and you have bacteria, it's infection, okay? In, fe in female, you can treat it. In male, again, refer it. But for the sake of God, listen to this point. If you have nitrate positive, leukocyte esterase positive, and bacteria positive, if you have flank pain, if you have fever, if you have nasal vomiting, it's not a simple lower urinary tract infection. It's a polynephritis and you need IV antibiotics. So do not treat the patient and refer it to the nearest hospital. But if it's if there is no fever, there is no flank pain, there is no uh, costal vertebral angle tenderness or I don't know, nasal vomiting, no symptomic, no systematic problem. It's just only dysuria, I don't know, some lower inner tract. It could be cystitis, whatever. For women, you, you may need ciprofloxacin uh, 500 milligram for five to seven days. But for men, do the culture all the time if possible. because And also do sonography. You should say, uh, what, what, what is the problem? That a male can develop this one, okay? And you see a midstream, you see uh, more than uh, 100,000 
chloroniformic unit is, is, a, is a sign of UTI. Let's move to the stool exam to make it simple. More than one white BC, more than one RBC is abnormal. If you see a fat droplet is abnormal and you should ask for a collection of the uh, 24 hours of the feces and if the fat is more than 7 gram, it's a problem again. It's dangerous. We need to work for it. If you have mucosa in the stool exam, it could be a sign of colitis. Again, it's important. If you have pus cell more than 5, it's important. And you need to do something. But some hands, if you don't have a stool culture or you need to do something all the time, first of all, ask three times. So all the time, ask a stool exam, OBOP, three times. Because it's very important to exclude uh, some some uh, infections may may sometimes uh, be hidden, but with three times we have a better chance to cra uh, to have a better cra grasp of what's going on there. So uh, do the OBOP three times, okay? Uh, for a hint, I can say, for if your stool RBC is much more than a stool white BC. It could be amebiasis, so entomoba histolytica. But if your stool white BC is much more than your stool RBC, it could be shigellosis. Uh, I think it's the end of the talk. But about arterial blood gas, as a hint, I can say that uh, bicarbonate normal is 24, CO2 is 14. And the pH is something between 7.35 to 7.45. I just want to mention something here in respiratory acidosis. So if you have a patient with a pH acidosis with high CO2 more than 14 and a compensatory bicarb more than 24 like here, the main reason is that the patient cannot breathe. It's high co-ventilation. And in, in case the pH is less than 7.25, you need high dose of oxygen as well as uh, 